Hi everyone and welcome on another one of our virtual Yellowstone tours. Today we're going to be doing the section of road between Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone, also just known as Canyon, and Fishing Bridge. Behind me is the road over Dunraven Pass to Mount Washburn and then on to Tower Falls and Tower Roosevelt and unfortunately that road is closed for two years. This is 2020 and the road is closed until 2022. So we'll have to wait a while before we can do a virtual Yellowstone tour on that part of the park. Off to our left are the buildings in the canyon area. You've got the lodges, the visitor center, as well as places where you can eat. We are continuing south. In fact, I suggest that you take a look at the map that you can see at our site, yellowstonetours.net forward slash map. That's yellowstonetours.net forward slash map. And you'll be able to get a view of where it is that we're going. You'll see that the roads through Yellowstone make up a massive figure of eight. And there's a road between Norris Geyser Basin and Canyon, which separates the gigantic figure of eight that the roads through Yellowstone make up into two loops. And uh, we're heading south from the eastern portion of that loop. If we have a look to the left here, we'll see a sign that says horseback rides. There's several places in the park where you can go horseback riding. The main point of interest, the main attraction in this uh, part of the park, as you've probably gathered from the name, is Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. And a road that we're coming up on our left encompasses the North Rim Drive. If you go down over there, you will see the road that's uh, along the North Rim of the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. There is a road that goes across the South Rim, but, oh, what have we here? When we run into something like this, it generally means either a bear or a buffalo jam, or possibly even an elk. There's been a young bull elk which still had velvet on its rack. I do see, uh, hanging out in this area, the elk has, I do see a few Park Service employees ahead of us, and you'll generally find them in the area where crowds need to be controlled when there is a bear in the area. Anyway, no doubt we'll see in a moment what it is. I see there's somebody over there behind that Ford Expedi Expedition staring up into the bushes. So perhaps there was a bear there and it's now moved off. There's an old joke that we like to tell in this area about how easy it is to find bears in Yellowstone. All you do is look for the crowds. And there's a crowd here and there's people with binoculars. So I suspect that the bear was at one stage closer to the road and has wandered off the way these people around us seem to be leaving now. One thing about Yellowstone is you never know what you're going to see when. I don't know, I don't know if you heard that, somebody yelled, what's over there? And somebody else said, I don't know, but, and that's what often happens, particularly in the Lamar Valley, when you'll be driving along and you'll see people with their long telescopes and long telephoto lenses and I will get back to that uh, in a minute. If we were, if we were to go down that road um, over there, we 
you would also get to another viewpoint of the Grand Canyon over the other side. That road, if you look at our map, is a short road with um, a turning circle at the end, and that is the, the brink of the Upper Falls. And I'll do my best to remember to get back to all these stories. The thing is, when you have a tour group in the park, somebody can remind you, hey, about 10 minutes ago, you were telling us about this, that, or the other, uh, and you neglected to finish the story. Won't you please get back to it? But being by myself in the vehicle, ah, and here we go again. Is this the elk that I mentioned to you before? That beautiful bull elk with velvet on its rack. Uh, just some buffalo. I shouldn't say just some buffalo, but when you're used to seeing hundreds of buffalo, when you see just one, then uh, it's not something that you tend to get wildly excited about. All right, so now I have to get back to the Lamar Valley story, but while we're in the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone area still, we've gone past two of the turnoffs to Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone, and coming up is the South Rim Drive. And even though this road doesn't really go through and you have to turn around at the end, this is where, in my opinion, you get the best views of Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. There's a bridge over there called the Chittenden Bridge, and it's named for Hiram Chittenden, who was part of uh, one of the geological surveys here. I think it was one of the 1870s. You may also remember his name. Look at how peaceful and calm the Yellowstone River is over there. It doesn't really know that in just a few hundred yards it's going to be plummeting off the side of a, of a cliff. Um, Chittenden, Hiram Chittenden, had a couple of things named after him in Yellowstone. One was that bridge that we've just passed, and the other one is the road right at the top of Mount Washburn, which you get to by accessing Dunraven Pass. Beautiful wide expanse of the Yellowstone River, isn't it? Uh, that you get to right at the top of um, Mount Washburn, Washburn, which takes you even higher up, and there are some magnificent views at the top of the, of the Chittenden Road looking down. Anyway, you cross over the Chittenden Road, oh, excuse me, you cross over the Chittenden Bridge, and you'll continue on to Artist Point, and on the way you'll go past a little parking lot on your left hand side which leads to Uncle Tom's Trail. Uh, Uncle Tom's Trail was named after a Bozeman resident and Bozeman is a town up to the north of the park. It's uh, the biggest town in our area. It was named after a Bozeman resident who had the concession to run a boat across the Yellowstone River where the Chittenden Bridge now is. And there used to be a trail that he used to take people on down to the bottom of the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone at that point. Well, you can't go all the way to the bottom at the moment, uh, but you can still hike down and have a splendid view of, um, of the upper Yellowstone Falls. At that part of the canyon, there's two waterfalls, the uh, upper falls and the lower falls. So if you continue along past Uncle Tom's Point, you will come to Artist Point at Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone, and that is the start of the Hayden Valley. And I'll tell you more about that in a moment. But if you do take that road, you will come to Artist Point, and that to me is the finest views that you get of Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. They, the viewpoint is elevated and you can look back down the canyon towards the falls. Then if you get back in your car, go back over the Chittenden Bridge and if we have a look here you can see that's where the Mary Mountain Trail either comes out or starts depending on which way you want to look at it. That's the east portion, the east entrance to the Mary Mountain Trail and those of you who've seen our video on the lower loop of the park, the section between
Madison Junction and Old Faithful will know that just before you get to the lower Geyser Basin, traveling from uh, Madison Junction towards Old Faithful, on your left hand side, you will see that uh, that's where the other end of the Mary Mountain Trail comes out. It's a fairly long trail, quite an interesting trail. Um, unfortunately, a few years ago, a, a bear biologist was actually killed. I don't know if you can see them. There's some pelicans off in the distance there. Yes, we do get pelicans in Yellowstone. A bear bi biologist was actually killed by a grizzly bear on the Mary Mountain Trail. And when we drove past it, when we were doing that section of the park, the trail was actually closed. And I suspect that it was closed for, for bear management. Let me now get back to Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. I had mentioned that you would turn around at the end of the trail to Artist Point, drive back over the Chittenden Bridge, and then continue north up towards Canyon Village. And then the next turnaround was the one that I believe I pointed out, that is to the brink of the Upper Falls. And you drive down that little road, it is unfortunately a little steep when you climb back up the trail from the actual viewpoint of the brink of the Upper Falls. But if you're up to it, it is a wonderful view. You're standing on top of the Upper Yellowstone Falls, looking down on the falls. And here we are in the Hayden Valley again, and this is a wonderful viewpoint. You are elevated and you have those great views over the Yellowstone River. And the reason that, and that's also the Hayden Valley on that side, the reason that it's such an open expanse uh, of land for the most part with just the, just the trees at the top is the Yellowstone Lake used to come all the way back into this part of the Hayden Valley and it dropped, it left uh, clay and uh, other sediment in this area. Let me just pass this car. It left uh, clay and um, other sediment and for that reason water, you see those ducks? Maybe I should just keep my keep my window open. We often see grizzly bears out here, particularly at the start and the end of the season. And because of the clay, uh, as the uh, other sediment in the ground, it's not easy for water. I guess I better close the window because of the noise from the wind. It's not easy for water to percolate through into the ground and this is why the Hayden Valley is somewhat marshy and trees are not able to grow over most of the of the valley. As we continue driving I'll tell you what we missed when we drove past Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. I was telling you how you are so close to the brink of the Upper Falls that you almost feel that you can reach down and touch the water that's plummeting over the falls. Obviously don't do that and that was a joke. Uh, you'll then turn around, drive back to the road that heads up towards Canyon Village and then you'll come to the road that I pointed out to you heading to the south rim of the Grand Canyon. There's any number of great views of, um, of that drive. The ones that I particularly recommend are Inspiration Point and uh, Grand Viewpoint. Inspiration Point particularly, as you're walking, uh, we look over there, there's one of those pelicans that I mentioned. Inspiration Point particularly, as you're walking to the viewpoint and you look down to your left as you're climbing up to it, you'll see some what we call hoodoos, some rock formations that uh, are kind of sort of similar to the hoodoos that you see at Bryce Canyon and you're looking down on them now and there's some osprey 
that always nest there. And depending on the time of the year, you might either see the osprey on her nest or you may see the, the baby ospreys when they're learning how to fly. In whichever case it is, it really is a, is a beautiful sight. We're going past a part of the Hayden Valley now where just a few weeks ago, and this is the beginning of July, just a few weeks ago, I saw a white wolf in this area and I will drop in a video of that white wolf. excursion diversions to our virtual Yellowstone tours but she is the daughter of another famous white wolf who was unfortunately illegally killed by a poacher while she was still inside Yellowstone as you might gather you can't you can't kill any animals in Yellowstone you're not allowed to do any hunting in Yellowstone and this white wolf's mother was illegally poached in Yellowstone. The white wolf that I videoed is the leader of one of the Yellowstone packs, the pack that is to be found where we are now in the Hayden Valley. It's known as the White Petey Pack. And I was very, very fortunate to come across her, to see her, and I was even more lucky to have a camera that had a 1200 millimeter lens and although Genius here didn't have a tripod and the video is somewhat shaky as you've probably seen it still was a wonderful opportunity to catch some footage of that of that wolf. I was telling you about Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone and the viewpoints on the North Rim Drive exploration point of Grand Viewpoint out and um, oh my goodness the third viewpoint has gone out of out of my mind in in any event um, there are three main viewpoints that I do suggest uh, that you that you that you look at as the speed limit here drops we we know that we're going to be coming to another thermal feature. In fact, there are two of them. Sulphur Cauldron is on our left. I've never really understood the, uh, the fascination or attraction of Sulphur Cauldron. But then coming up on our right is another thermal area called Mud Volcano. And I do recommend that stop over here at Mud Volcano and take a walk around the boardwalks over there. The so-called Dragon's Mouth is well worth seeing, especially on a, a windy, stormy, overcast day. We are next to the Yellowstone River again as we carry on heading in a general, a general southerly direction. So to finish up on Grand Canyon and the Yellowstone, there's any number of viewpoints. Those are the three main viewpoints that I would encourage you to, to go and look at. You'll then come out again at the Grand Canyon of the village building area and at that point you can either turn around or you can continue to Norris or when the road is open get up to Dun Dunraven um, excuse me when the road to Dunraven Pass is open you can continue in that direction or head across to Norris to the west side of the of the park. The Hayden Valley is one of, as you've probably gathered by now, one of the main parts of Yellowstone 
where you can expect to see wildlife. It really is known for its wildlife, particularly its herd of buffalo, and I know that we really didn't see many today. I just saw a few, which I don't think um, I showed you. The Hayden Valley is what's known as a subalpine valley. It's approximately seven miles long, uh, that is seven miles north to south and about seven miles wide uh, east to west and talking about areas which are great to see wildlife I know that uh, I was telling you about the Lamar Valley and I made that little joke not really a joke about how easy it is to find bears in Yellowstone you just look for the for the for the crowds and I started to tell you about the Lamar Valley as we go past uh, Yellowstone River once again, I started to tell you about the Lamar Valley. Well, in my opinion, the Lamar Valley is the best area in the park to go looking for wildlife. You have to be there though, really, either at dawn or dusk, to have the best chance of seeing wolves. And that is the best place in the park to go and see wolves. I would tend to stay either in Gardner which is up to the north entrance of the park or in at the Crook City Silvergate area if you do want to try and uh, have the opportunities to see wolves. Anyway, our tours will be going through there perhaps at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock in the day and you'll see groups of people with those long telescopes and long telephoto lenses on their cameras that uh, I mentioned before and you'll stop and say, hey, what are you guys doing here? And somebody will say, oh, Bob over there saw a wolf. Really? Wow. How cool is that? And you'll say, well, when did he see it? Oh, six o'clock this morning. And you think to yourself, well, if you saw it five or six hours ago, what on earth are you still doing here? Hoping that the same wolf is, is going to show up. lake that is situated at altitude. Lake Tahoe, which uh, sort of straddles California, Nevada, is a larger lake, but it's not at the same elevation as Yellowstone Lake. And Yellowstone Lake is the second largest alpine lake in the world. I'll be telling you a lot more about Yellowstone Lake, and I'm sorry the sun is in the wrong direction at the moment, and I'll be telling you a lot more about Yellowstone Lake in the section of the uh, video that deals with the route between Fishing Bridge and West Thun, so please make sure that you have to take a look at that, and here the Yellowstone River opens up again. see the snags or standing dead trees that you so often come across because of the fires that occur in, in Yellowstone National Park. To get back to the Hayden Valley, the Hayden Valley was named after Ferdinand and uh, Ferdinand Hayden was one of the first people, in fact I think his survey was the first Yes, it was. His, uh, Hayden, uh, the Hayden survey was the first back in 1871 to survey this part of the United States and it was as a result of the Hayden survey that uh, Yellowstone came into, in, into being. Remember in those days the bulk of the population of the United States was living on the East Coast and the West Coast hadn't really been explored or, or developed the way it is now. So these various surveys, particularly geological surveys, were sent out to find out more about this area. The early fur trappers had sent back information about not only Yellowstone, but the area around it. And uh, various drawings had been sent back. 
As a result of that, the Lewis and Clark expedition was sent out to explore the region. Lewis and Clark, though, didn't actually come down to the area that we now know as Yellowstone. They were up to the north of it, but uh, some members of their party and soldiers were given permission to leave the expedition and come down here. And we know that that they made their way through through Yellowstone. As we approach the fr the fishing bridge area, we'll notice the more mature trees. You can see how at the top of the lodgepole pines and the various other trees, that's where the where the branches start. And the bottom of the trees don't have, for the most part, branches or leaves on them. And that's very interesting when we consider fire management in not only the national parks, but uh, also fire management on uh, Bureau of Land Management land, and also in the in the national forests and so much. Again, I know I left some questions uh, unanswered, but we're coming to the end of this section of road. We're approaching Fishing Bridge, and if we were to take this road off to our left over here, the road would eventually take us to the east entrance of Yellowstone, and then on to Cody, Wyoming. Thank you for joining me on another one of our virtual Yellowstone tours. If you've enjoyed this tour, please consider giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you in Yellowstone.